everyone, thank you for coming to Nutritional Truths with Pedro. I haven't made a video for a long time, but now I'm back. Salt, sodium, what is it? Good or bad? That's what we're gonna talk in the next couple of minutes. If you go on the street and you start asking everybody if his salt is good or bad, in any city in the world, 999 of 1000 will say it's bad. But why? Even doctors prescribe diets low in salt, called iposodic diets, and they are doing this for a long, long time, but more specifically since 1979. At this time, it was taken the decision to orient the population to make use of a diet low in salt. But if you make an analysis of more than 17,000 studies made on salt, you will conclude that salt is good, and most of these studies are about blood pressure. InterSalt trial is a study which they had 10,000 people from 32 countries, which 520 out of those 10,000 had irregular salt levels, but only 4 400 had a clear relation between high blood pressure and salt. And remember, they were 10,000 people. This study showed that the iposodic diet causes the reduction of the blood pressure, a reduction of 1.27 in the systolic and 0.54 in the diastolic. Meaning, a person that has an 1810 in blood pressure, if I put it on a restricted iposodic diet, he will only reduce his blood pressure for 19 instead of 18 on the systolic and 9.5 instead of the 10 on the diastolic, which is almost nothing. A no change at all for such a strict diet. But now you ask, so is salt good or bad? If we are talking about salt, we first have to define salt. Salt is a rock rich in minerals, around 82 minerals including magnesium. And I am mentioning magnesium just because he is the master of all minerals. He participates in more than 300 chemical reactions in the human body. It relaxes the muscles and arteries and it is anti-stress. So it is good then, why people say it's bad? Salt is good, refined salt is bad. First of all the title refined salt or table salt should not exist because it's not salt at all, it is sodium and chloride. The process of refining the salt throws away almost all the minerals leaving only two of them, the sodium and the chloride. Ammonium citrate, aluminium salicylate and dextrose are some of the substances used to refine it. Sodium ferrocyanide and potassium ferrocyanide are the most common anti-caking agents and their function is either to absorb excess moisture or coating particles leaving them water repellent. Leaving the grains always dry and that makes it more free flowing. Talc and silica aluminate are commonly included as well. All all those chemicals after they do their work they stay in the salt and they are harmful for your health. So yes, the truth is, if you use table salt or refined salt, you are creating problems to your health. If you want to have a better health, you should not use them. Marine salt or sea salt is another title they use for salt, meaning the salt came from the sea and it has all the good minerals in it. But if it says refined, it means that only contains two minerals and you're paying more and getting the same as any other refined salt. Just marketing guys. What about light marine salt? Guys, anything with the word light, throw it away. So just to clarify, a diet low in salt, is it healthy? That's a big no. A diet low in salt is harmful for you. Your energy, your ability to sleep and your mood will improve once you start consuming unrefined salt. The salt calls hypertension? That's a big no again. There's a lot of people that if you introduce unrefined salt to their habits, they will stop having hypertension. Minerals are important for you. They are alkalizing agents and if you don't have them your corporal pH will turn acidic and the body with an acid environment is more vulnerable to develop cancers. Chronic diseases and stress causes deficiency in minerals and your antioxidant enzymes use minerals to work, for example magnesium, calcium, selenium, zinc and manganese. Deficiency in minerals also causes metabolic acidosis meaning that you'll age faster and I think nobody wants that. Non-refined salt treats asthma, allergic rhinitis and adrenal exhaustion. A person without the use of salt will never get rid of adrenal exhaustion. The body detoxification is made through minerals. Selenium helps to chelate toxic heavy metals from the body. Boron helps preventing osteoporosis and chromium regulates the blood sugar levels. Salt is one of the few sources to ingest copper which helps the body to form new arteries whenever the main arteries become too clogged. Diabetes gets better by the consumption of minerals and also you can get fatigued very easily if you have deficiency of them. Small quantities of sea salt will lower the blood pressure of most individuals because it provides the trace minerals that aid with the blood pressure regulation. Mineral deficiencies are partially responsible for rising obesity epidemic. Obese people are invariably malnutrished and their bodies are starving because regardless of how much they eat they are not getting the minerals and nutrients they need. What about the Himalayas?
Himalayan pink salt. The biggest mines of Himalayan salt are in Pakistan. There is more than 350 kilometers of mines full of salt. And that means probably we'll never run out of it. But what about the fluoride in that salt? A lot of people have a negative opinion about Himalayan salt because they don't know what it is and they just heard some people talking about it and no one gave them real numbers. Fluoride levels in this salt are 5,000 times less than the tap water you have in your house and even much less than the toothpaste you use. So think twice about your priorities. I'll put here the link on my video about fluoride so you can have a clue about it. What about iodine and iodide? The potassium iodide that is added to the table salt is not adequate to compensate for most iodine deficiencies. It is usually sufficient to stop the goitrous balls from swelling in the neck, which are caused by extreme deficiency. However, it is not enough iodine to maintain an optimal health unless a dangerous amount of sodium is consumed. Okay. It all makes sense now, but what about the fake salts? I heard something about it. Some companies, they sell bright white sea salt, but they have had all their minerals removed, just like the table salt. It is the minerals that give the sea salt an off-white color. Depending from where it originates, real sea salt will be either gray or slightly pink. Salt contains salt water minerals. It is never bright white. So when you are buying the salt, remember nothing refined, nothing with a bright white color. And be careful as well with some companies that they say they sell Himalayan pink salt, but it's just white sea salt with some color added on it. Just to finish, be careful of processed foods. They are very high in sodium, always in the form of table salt, artificial flavors or flavor enhancers. In the ultimate art health industry, low sodium products often contain monosonium glutamate and the sodium based excitosin that causes heart attacks in people people who do not have enough magnesium. It is probably the most common reason for mysterious heart failures in young athletes who simply fall over dead at sporting events. The profuse sweating imbalances their electrolytes even further to become the final straw on their camel's back. I hope we have learned something new today. If you did, hit that like button. Share this with your friends so you help them live longer as well. Subscribe down here for more and here on the side I'll put some two videos. If you didn't watch them already, go for it. Stay healthy with Nutrition Truth and as always, thanks for watching.